Good evening and welcome to St. Wilfred's Church for our um, evening nine lessons and carols. Um, you're really welcome here if it's your first time or if you've been coming to this church for a long time. Um, you're really welcome. And we also welcome those who are watching online tonight. Um, you're welcome too. This evening we're going to uh, go through um, the beginning to end and it's going to mainly just flow on from reading to carol to reading um, and then there's a little talk that um, our vicar Joel has, has recorded for tonight. Unfortunately he's uh, currently in lockdown in his household because they've got um, COVID. So you've got the, the A team tonight. So before we start, we'll just have a moment of prayer and a moment just to remember um, key people in the world who, who might not be having a great time right now, those that might be suffering from illnesses such as COVID and those who might be lonely and homeless. And we've got a response for the, the prayers, which is, as we pray, live and give, shine your everlasting light. So let's pray. Jesus Christ, born in the stable, be with the poor and the homeless this Christmas time. Together we say, as we pray, live and give, shine your everlasting light. Jesus Christ, born of Mary, be with young mothers across the world this Christmas time. As we pray, live and give, shine your everlasting light. Jesus Christ, visited by the shepherds, be with us all and all those who work this Christmas time and all those who long to work, as we pray, live and give, shine your everlasting light. Jesus Christ, who became a refugee, be with those who fear for their lives and those who have left homes and families this Christmas. As we pray, live and give, Shine your everlasting light. Jesus Christ, the great healer, through your Holy Spirit, we ask for healing for those who are sick at this time. As we pray, live and give. Shine your everlasting light.
Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me. And I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me.
The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wise Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Oh, uh-huh. 
the birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was the governor of Syria. And everywhere went to the, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in line of David. He went there to register with Mary, Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While there, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in a cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him 
nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and through the world was made through him. The world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, with the wonder of technology, Joel, our vicar, is going to share some thoughts with us. Good evening. Hello and welcome to our service of Nine Lessons and Carols. My name's Joel Many, and I'm the vicar here at St Wilfred Church. I love this service for so many reasons. I love walking into the church from the very cold outside to the warmth of the church building. I love coming in and seeing that massive tree in front of you and all the decorations and all the light shining through the darkness. I love joining with friends and with family and with neighbours to join our voices together, to sing songs, to uh, hear those rich arrangements, uh, those beautiful melodies, those beautiful harmonies of the music. And of course, I, I love hearing the words of scripture being read that tell that great story of redemption with its completeness found in Jesus Christ. So it's an absolute blow for me that I can't be with you in person tonight. Well, one of the most famous Christmas songs of our time uh, is All I Want for Christmas, written by Mariah Carey. I'll save you the embarrassment of me trying to perform it. All I Want for Christmas was released in 1994 and by 2017 it was estimated that $60 million dollars have been raised in royalties. Staggering amount, isn't it? The lyrics go like this. I don't want a lot for Christmas. There is just one thing that I need. I don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. I just want you for my own. More than you could ever know. Make my wish come true. All I want for Christmas is you. The Bank of England estimates that a typical household will spend on average about 700 pounds extra in December compared to the other months of the year. Most of that is spent on music, on video, on technology, on equipment, on books and so on, uh, followed then by food and of course alcohol expenditure. In America over one trillion dollars is spent on Christmas alone. The lyrics of All I Want for Christmas cut across the consumerism of Christmas and they explore this desire of our hearts, the desire of humanity to be together, to be with one another, not to be alone, but to have companionship. According to the song, that is all that we need. We have this little saying in our house when it comes to buying Christmas presents. It goes like this, uh, something you want, something you need, something to wear and something to read. 
just helps us kind of structure our purchasing uh, in a little bit of an organised way. But I wonder what you want for Christmas. What are you hoping for? What's on your wish list? What's on your menu, perhaps? What is that one thing that you need? Don't know about you, but there's something about this year where perhaps even more than last year, where, to be honest, I just want to be with my friends. I just want to spend time with my family. Perhaps it's because I know what it feels like to miss out on all that stuff from last year. To be honest, you can leave the presents. You can even leave the food. That's a big thing for me to say. I can pass on that. Just to be with and around those that I love. I think that within each of us, there's a desire, there's a yearning, there's a longing, a craving, maybe as that song was trying to articulate, to be in an atmosphere where not only do we not feel alone, but we feel truly loved, where we feel accepted. I believe, as many Christians do across the world, that within us is an even deeper desire an even deeper yearning, a craving that is to be in the most safe and the most beautiful of all places, to be in the arms of the one who loves us unconditionally, our heavenly father. Well, an old church father once said that our souls are restless until they find their rests in God. Our souls are restless until they find their rest in God. In other words, the key to contentment, the key to true peace, to true joy, to true rest, the key to being accepted and truly loved is to be found in God. God, the one whose face we see in the baby in the manger, the one whose arms were outstretched on the cross, and the one who rose again from the grave so that we could have life and life in all its fullness. Jesus Christ said that he was the way, he is the truth and he is the life. That he is the only way to our heavenly father's arms. And he said that by his spirit, the Holy Spirit, we could know that we are never alone but that he is always with us, comforting us and surrounding us with his love. I love the words of that old Christmas carol, O little town of Bethlehem. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in the dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and the fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Whatever your greatest wish, whatever your greatest need, whatever your hopes or indeed whatever your fears may be, the message of Christmas is that whatever you are looking for or longing for, there is just one thing that we truly need. It is to know the love of God revealed to us in the person, Jesus Christ. And all he wants, all he desires, all he longs for is to be with you. Oh, Merry Christmas to you. And may you know the joy of our Saviour's birth. Good evening.
Well, it sounded good from where I was stood. So in reward, there'll be um, non-alcoholic mulled wine and mince pies on your way out and a time to chat outside, um, just underneath the outside lights. Um, so good to catch up with friends new and old. Um, and I think there's lots of warm mulled wine to, to glug down. So please do join us at the end of that. Just a couple of notices before a final blessing. Um, this is our last in-person service until the 2nd of January. So if, if this is your first time or if you were planning on coming over the Christmas services, we're just moving online for the next week um, just because of the, the extra cases of COVID we've got amongst our team and, and stuff like that. And we'd rather everybody have a great time with their family and friends. So um, we'll have... Um, Hopefully, a crib service for children and families will be online on Christmas Eve um, around four o'clock, and that will be available on YouTube. Um, we're just working out some technical things on that one. Um, there'll be no midnight communion because I'm not sure people will want to wake up at 11.30 and watch YouTube. But there'll be a, a Christmas morning service at 10 o'clock, um, and then on Boxing Day, another short service as well. Um, and then back at 10 o'clock on the 2nd of January, um, where all our congregations will be together for Holy Communion. Um, and then after that, our Sunday services of 9.30 traditional communion and 11.15 um, informal service will continue. So I just want to reiterate the words that, that Joel said and what the bishop said this morning at our other services. Um, we wish you a really happy and healthy and holy Christmas. Um, stay strong, keep on smiling and spread that joy of Christmas Day not only on Christmas Day but every day of the year so why don't we stand as we just ask for God's blessing so may the joy of the angels the eagerness of the shepherds and the perseverance of the wise men the obedience of Joseph and Mary and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas for your families, your friends, and those who you love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Happy Christmas. <laughs>